how do we actually learn mountain biking skills? What's the neuroscience behind it? How can we accelerate learning skills and why you may be scared riding fast on a trail? All of this in this video. Welcome, my name is Roxy and today I'd like to talk about the neuroscience of learning skills and how we can leverage these findings in order to learn faster, more effectively and also in order to finally learn the skills we really want to learn. All the things I'm talking about today are from two sources. One is this book which is really amazing, I'm going to link it below. If you're a parent or a coach or someone who's, who's an avid learner, then this book is really amazing. And the other half of the information, basically, is from the podcast of Andrew Huberman, who is a neuroscientist, a professor at Stanford University. I'm going to link his podcast below. Why is this information today important for you? Well, if you like learning or if you're a coach or a trainer or a parent, then these, all these, the information you have in this video can really help you accelerate your learning journey or accelerate the learning journey of the people you are coaching or teaching or your, ch or your children's learning journey. Mm, okay, first of all, I'd like to talk about how motor learning works. So this acquisition of motor skills, of movement related skills, like for example, mountain biking. We have four different areas involved. We have our upper motor neurons in our brain, our lower motor, motor neurons in our spine. Then we have CPGs, central pattern generators, and we have our muscles. It's important to know that when we're learning something, we're actually not training our body, we are training our brain because our brain governs what our body does. So if we're not training our brain, then we can't really train our body. That's why this is important and that's why I'm talking about neuroscience because we're forming new neurons in our brain and that will actually, in the long run, give us the gain we want to have. The first step is always understanding what's happening that will involve the upper motor neurons to actually tell the rest of the body what it needs to do. So we need to have a clear idea of the skill, how it looks, of the individual steps that make up a skill and our goal. We have to have a clear goal in order to practice in a strategic fashion. Then the next step is that we have to think about how does this thing or this skill we want to achieve, how will it feel in our body? So we have to send the signals to our lower motor neurons. And then these will send the signals to our muscles. And then there are also central pattern generators, CPGs, and these are responsible for all the moves that are automatic. For example, if you are breathing right now, or if you're walking somewhere, then you don't have to think about it. We can always override these CPGs by thinking about it. For example, if you're walking, you don't have to think about it, but if I tell you now take two steps with your right foot, then two with your left foot, you can do that. So you can override your central pattern by doing something actively, and what you're doing is you're involving the upper motor neurons and the lower motor neurons, and these address your muscles, and then you can change what you're doing so you can override the central pattern generators. However, when we're learning motor skills, the goal is always to form these central patterns in order for the central pattern generators to overtake because then we don't have to think about the movement anymore. And here is a really, a really important information. A lot of people think we can multitask, but actually that's a myth. We can not multitask. We cannot do several things at once. This has been proven several times. As soon as we do a second thing at the same time, what our brain is actually doing is jumping between the two tasks, tasks so this, 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 in milliseconds, and not doing them at the same time. And the quality of both of the skills performed drastically decreases. And 
why is that important to know? Because when we're mountain biking, we are actually, well, we think we are multitasking and we want to multitask, especially when we're out on the trail. We have lots of skills involved, like coordination. We have to look how fast are we going? When do we initiate the skill? And of course, we have the skill itself. And this is important to know because we in the trail, if we are distracted, all we can use is the central patterns. So the skills we already have central pattern generators for, we cannot use new skills. Why is this important? Because a lot of people think that they can just learn by doing on the trail. So they ask me, hey, I wanna ride more technical terrain. Can I just go out and ride? And I'm just gonna increase the difficulty of my riding and then I'm gonna learn by doing. And that is not the case. And here's why. Learning involves upper motor neurons, lower motor neurons. And then you form the central pattern generators. As soon as you already have a central pattern for a movement, that will always take over unless you actively tell it to not to. But in that case, you can't do anything else. So learning can only occur in an environment free from stimuli. So if you are not distracted, for example, on a parking lot or on a really easy trail when you don't have to think about what's going on. So as soon as you are in technically demanding terrain, your central pattern generators are taking over. And if these are old bad habits, then you will only reinforce these bad habits with time. That's why in order to learn, what you need to do is first you have a clear idea of the skill, of a goal, of what you want to achieve. Then you make a plan, you say, okay, I want to do this, and this is, my arm does this, my leg does this, so you have a clear idea of the skill. Then you go out, you practice, you focus on your practice, this is important, in order to have the right neurochemicals in your brain. Then you do reps, then you focus on your errors, although this is psychologically a little uncomfortable often, but it's important for your brain to form new connections. So focusing on the error and then you repeat and you do this all the time. So repetitions or first clear idea, repetitions, focus on error, repeat and always again. And then this is a hack kind of thing. After your session, after you've done this, you just sit down five minutes and you let your brain run in idle. So don't think about anything. Neuroscience doesn't know yet why, but this is super important because in this time, actually the movements run backwards and the, the neural connections are reinforced. So this is important. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now we come to something that I call hard skills and soft skills. Well, I don't call it. It's actually in this book that it's hard skills and soft skills. But now I know that, that this is how they are called. Hard skills are skills that are always the same. For example, a bunny hop, how the bunny hop looks and the skills that make it up. That's a hard skill. Or when you're playing basketball, how you throw the ball into the basket or if you're kicking if you're a soccer player how you kick the ball a specific way of kicking that's a hard skill these are precise movements which you have to train then there are soft skills soft skills are the skills that you they don't have a fixed way of doing it's about reacting to what's happening on the outside and for example, mountain biking is a soft skill, is reading the terrain, picking a line, reacting to when your wheels slip. That's a soft skill. And the hard skill, as I said, is having the balanced stance in the first place, understanding all the little elements that make up a balanced stance, roll downs, all that, those are skills, hard skills, and the other one, reading the terrain, soft skills. The important thing is that soft skills can be learned by playing. So just by going out and riding, playing, having a good time, soft skills, yep, you're working on them, you're making them better. Hard skills can only be learned by structured and deliberate practice, the way I said before, upper motor neurons, lower motor neurons, central pattern generators, muscles. And 
in order to learn hard skills, it's so important to start early because our brain is made to learn. It is not made to unlearn. So if you already have bad habits because you just went out to ride and you've been riding about 10 years, just doing your thing, then most probably you have bad habits and unlearning these will take a lot of time. So if you're a new rider or if you're a new golf player or if you're just starting with a new sport, then take professional coaching as early as you can. Learning something new is much easier than unlearning bad habits. And this is important for us to know because most of us have been riding for quite some time and now we want to improve our skills. So it's important for you to know if you have been riding for quite a long time, then you need to regress to progress. You must regress to progress. There's no other way. You will not learn out when you're riding on the trail because you're just training your soft skills. So you learn how to arrange yourself with your momentary skill level of hard skills by improving your soft skills. So yes, you will become better, but the hard skills will remain here and the soft skills will increase. If you want to improve your hard skills, like really learn how to bunny hop higher, or if you want to learn how to manual, you need to practice in a structured fashion in, a, in an environment without stimuli. For example, a parking lot or a really easy trail. And you have to practice in a structured fashion. That's what neuroscience says. It's just not possible to practice these things on a trail, playing around and finding out, at least not for adults. Kids is a different story. But this applies to adults learning skills. Why is this important for us? As I said, because it gives us realistic expectations, both for coaches, but also for students or writers who want to learn something that if they really want to learn something, they need professional coaching or you need to break down a skill by watching videos, really understanding the essence of the skill and then working on the individual elements that make up the skill. I call it the skill pyramid, by the way, on my Patreon channel, I have the skill pyramid as a picture for you to see where I have the individual skills, which skill builds up to which skill and which skill is the foundation for another skill. As soon as you've understood this pyramid, then you can work on it yourself. And this is super important to have realistic expectations in order to not run down into a dead end, which a lot of writers unfortunately do. Now, next topic is why many people feel fearful when they want to ride faster on a trail. Maybe if you've been listening, you already know that most probably they already have central pattern generators with bad habits. And I like to say our body is often more intelligent than our brain. Obviously, our body doesn't have it's the brain of itself, but or a brain of its own. But the idea is that our brain is very often distracted by our ego or by beliefs. For example, a belief could be, I need to ride this because she or he wrote it. Or I need to ride this because I'm a coach. And in order to be a coach, I have to be able to ride this. I'm sure some one, I'm sure you felt something similar. So the pressure we make ourselves that we need to ride a section because we're worthy if we write it or we're serious if we do or it has to be easy that others are doing it and as soon as this happens it's actually our ego telling us to do something that our body is clearly not ready for of course there are sometimes different reasons like for example a trauma you've had because a crash or something if you have had a crash or a trauma and you would like to work on it then do contact me i'm a mental trainer and a psychological counselor and we can work on it however if you have not had a trauma or a crash and you are scared of riding fast then be honest to yourself ask yourself do i really know what i have to do when am i 100 percent clear that my upper motor neurons know what to tell the lower motor neurons what to tell my limbs are there central patterns that are correct? Are these central patterns really telling me or do they really know what to do in this kind of terrain in a fast fashion? 
And that's when speed, as soon as speed comes in, it has to be governed by central pattern generators. So your central patterns have to be clean. You need clean technique. And mostly I've been coaching riders of all levels from beginner to Olympic pro for over 10 years now. Mostly when riders come and say, I feel fearful when it's fast, or I feel fearful when there are several complications, like a step, it's loose, it's steep, and there's rocks. Then this is not because one of these obstacles is actually making them fearful. It's because they don't have the fundamentals to ride the section. And here we are back at the skills pyramid I was talking about. And that's why it's so important to understand how learning works, how we can accelerate it, how we can leverage these findings and to accept that sometimes fear is legitimate. The fear we are feeling, it's not a mental block, it's a legitimate fear because our body knows that we are actually not ready. Our central patterns are not where we want them to be. We are not Aaron Gwynn or Rachel Atherton in that moment. It has to be automatic. How do we form these automatisms? By regressing to progress, by working on the individual skills that make up the skill in a structured fashion. If you would like to work on skills, you can either book me as a private coach or you can check below for my Patreon channel. You can become a patron and you can support me both for th these videos here on YouTube, YouTube, but also I have more videos on my Patreon channel where I share short inspirational kind of clips, podcasts, and also troubleshooter tutorials where you can find out why specific skills may not be working. I'm super grateful for you being here. If you like my videos and want to keep them ads free, buy me a coffee. The link is below in the description. Click subscribe, give me the thumb up. And if you have questions or if you would like to find out more about similar topics, then just comment below. Have a wonderful day and 